New information tonight at 5 about the future of a Nulu apartment building destroyed by a massive fire. It's our top story. I'm Shay McAllister. And I'm Doug Prophet. The Louisville Fire Chief this afternoon is now ordering an emergency demolition of the gutted four-story building. Our Fire Prevention Bureau has been over there to take a look at it. They have put in an order for emergency demolition. Uh, now that's going to go to the city and the city will have to decide when that happens and how that happens. We also learned today how many people are out of a place to live, and it is a big number. WHS 11's Jose Alonzo talked with the fire chief about how firefighters had to navigate this situation much differently. Fire Chief Brian O'Neill says his crews are on a fire watch here at the 310 at Nulu apartment complex. He went on to say that the next steps of this is the demolition of the building, and he also detailed what it was like navigating this fire. Once officials determined they had flames above and below them, O'Neill says he instructed his team to evacuate the building. At this moment, there is still a looming threat of the entire building collapsing on itself, raising a concern on how new structures are built. O'Neill says as a firefighter, they are always pushing for building codes to be stronger and wants people to always have a fire plan. One thing to understand about lightweight trusts is they can actually hold more weight than traditional construction. However, the way those trusses are thrown together, uh, they're just that, they're lightweight, they're held together by glue, gusset plates, and they're good until they're not. It's now in the hands of the city to plan when the structure will come down. The complex has other structures like this one that caught fire. O'Neill says they are still investigating the source of the fire, but that it's difficult because they cannot enter the building. In Louisville, Jose Alonso, WHAS 11, on your side. The fire chief went on to say the complex's management and the Red Cross continue to help those 64 people now displaced. Some of those residents are college students and the University of Louisville is helping them find temporary housing, giving them vouchers for both food and emergency supplies. Major news this afternoon from the Louisville mayor's office. Negotiations have officially started on the contract that will dictate the city's future under the Department of Justice's U.S. Department of Justice's watch. We're talking about the federal consent decree. That's the list of reforms Metro government and police will promise to meet in the foreseeable future. Senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez has been following this closely since the DOJ first came to town. That was nearly a year ago. And uh, Isaiah, this announcement just sort of came out of nowhere today when we were waiting for these negotiations to start. Well, Doug, of course, Doug and Shay, we figured it couldn't be too much longer, right, until we got some word on those negotiations. Now, just this morning, I was talking over the phone with the county attorney's office to set up a time to talk about how long it's taken to get a first draft on the table. And just like that, within hours of that call, this release comes out. It's been called the living, breathing document that will determine Louisville's path forward for years to come, a federal consent decree. Mayor Craig Greenberg announcing Tuesday that his office, alongside the Jefferson County attorney and LMPD, have started initial negotiations with the U.S. Department of Justice to, quote, receive and review the first draft. Hours before the announcement, Greenberg was asked at an unrelated news conference when the public would know more. The mayor saying the DOJ has advised for the draft document to be confidential, promising he and LMPD's chief will keep the city as updated as possible. I am planning to be as transparent as the United States Department of Justice will allow us to be. Uh, and I will simply say, stay tuned. This comes nearly a year after the DOJ stepped foot into the Louisville mayor's gallery. In March of 2023, Attorney General Merrick Garland announced their investigation found repeated and routine incidents of LMPD officers depriving people, disproportionately black people, of their constitutional rights. Once agreed upon, the consent decree will require a list of reforms to fix these problems. An independent monitor will measure progress, and ultimately a judge will decide whether whether the city is meeting a constitutional standard that can last. And it's important to note the city and the Justice Department have already agreed in principle to move forward with a consent decree. That was over a year or around a year ago. It's just a matter at this point of when and how much LMPD will be required to change. All things we'll be looking to learn more about here in the months to come. Shay. 
All right, Isaiah, thank you very much. Well, within the last hour, the ACLU released a statement about the city's consent decree negotiations. They emphasized the importance of having community involvement as the process moved forward. They said in a quote, there's a very long road ahead for broad scale reform of LNPD's policies, practices and training, including the voices and ideas of directly impacted community members in this process is the only way we can hope for any level of healing from the horrific abuses that were suffered. And we do want to remind you, last year we did a series of reports looking at what a consent decree looks like in New Orleans. The city has been under one for years, and they shared the good and the ugly. You can watch it. It's called The Road to Reform, available right now on our website, whas11.com. Happening late today, Louisville Metro Police on the scene investigating after a man was shot and killed in Louisville's Taylor Berry neighborhood this afternoon. That's the south end. LMPD says they were called to Homeview Drive in the Taylor Berry neighborhood where they found a man dead from a bullet wound. Police say they do not have any suspects, but they're urging anyone with information to help their detectives and call the anonymous tip line at 574 LMPD. Well, in February in Kentucky, you don't know what you're going to get weather-wise. When you get a 60-degree gorgeous day like this, <laughs> you've got to celebrate. I call it a three-change day. You start, <laughs> off, start off in the morning with heavy coats and hats. Then all of a sudden, by midday, it's down to a windbreaker, and then throw the coats out yeah, by mid-afternoon. You should see the interest way to my uh, my home. You could just see coats everywhere. You know, <laughs> you just got to shed it quick. You have to check outside. Is it warm? Is it cold? It is definitely a change up. We're typically not in the 60s this time of year. Crystal blue skies right now outside. If you haven't gotten a chance, go outside and enjoy it. We will have more clouds this time tomorrow with rain on the way Thursday. 61 right here in downtown sitting in the upper 50s in Bowman. 60 right over Fort Knox. So we have some mild temperatures here over the next few hours. Temperatures will be getting back into the 50s, but still pr staying pretty mild here throughout the rest of your evening. Overnight tonight, we aren't going to be as cold. In fact, lows will be in the mid to upper 30s and even 40s in some spots with a warmer start and a warmer afternoon. Highs in the mid to upper 60s, especially here in downtown, getting close to 70. We haven't had a 70 degree day in a while, and we're getting close to it. Once we head towards Thursday, that's when those rain chances are really going to start to pick up. Wednesday, late night for that 20%, and then picking up right around 4 or 5 to 6 p.m. on Thursday. Could even see a few isolated thunderstorms. So pretty dry tomorrow. Clouds increase by the afternoon with highs in the mid-60s. Scattered sprinkles Thursday morning, but that big rain heads our way into the afternoon. I'll show you how much rain we can get here in Kentuckiana coming up. Doug, Shay. First thing I've learned as superintendent of JCPS, once you think you've learned it all and you know it all about leadership, you're about to get punched in the mouth. That is JCPS school superintendent Dr. Marty Polio today at the JCPS State of the District address talking about the rough start to the school year. The district's challenges continue with the potential for state oversight, but Polio used his speech today to push back. Ian Hardwood and photojournalist Jessica Farley heard from the superintendent. Ian, what else did he have to say today? Shay, he committed to the decisions he's made specifically on diversity and equity efforts. Those are meant to bring all students up to the same speed. When it comes to a potential state audit, Polio's confident JCPS would pass the test, but he's worried, however, the test might be rigged. Students who have the least amount of resources in their home need to have the most amount of resources in their school. If they break up JCPS, this will no longer happen. Another state audit of the district is on the horizon in Frankfort. Some Jefferson County lawmakers want to split up JCPS into smaller school systems. It's a road superintendent polio's been down before. Two in 2018, one in 2019, one in 2020. Six audits in seven years. In some, the Kentucky Department of Education weighing in, saying the district was effective. JCPS School Board Chair Corey Scholl echoing polio. They're fine with another audit if it's fair. We are against an audit with a preconceived outcome. We um, are, not, are not in favor of anything that is a political ploy. In front of a crowd of educators and politicians, Polio rallied for equity and praised the district's transition to choice zones. Those let families decide if they want students to attend schools closer to home, but contributed to new routes drivers struggled to complete. We know this. Ten years ago, we had over 950 bus drivers. Right now, we have approximately 550 bus drivers, and we are providing the same services. But Polio has been clear. 
it's time to face the music on busing students. Hiring in schools across the country is a continuing issue, leading to some difficult decisions. Increase drivers or decrease routes. That's what we can do. While they're working to hire more bus drivers, route cuts to traditional and magnet schools are possible. Polio is proud of the district's move to a reading curriculum standard, which is happening with math too. We trained 4,000 teachers this summer when it came to teaching literacy. Math is next. We already have about half our elementary schools. That's this summer. We'll have to train 6,000 more this summer. He also reiterated support for an optional backpack league program for students. It lasts four weeks in the summer, originally starting as a federal program to help recover pandemic learning losses. Now remember, you can weigh in on how the district's doing at any of their board meetings during public comment. The next one is March 5th at 6 p.m. And one more thing, a special thanks to Ballard High School students for playing the music there at the State of the District. Shay? All right, Ian. Good shout out there. Well, according to Mayor Mike Moore, the state of Jeffersonville is strong and only getting stronger. A small township of River Ridge is seeing massive growth. The huge tech company Meta is opening up an AI hub right there in the area. But the mayor says they need a firehouse nearby, something River Ridge needs to help pay for. But the residents of Jeff shouldn't have to bear the entire expense of that protection. While the only thing River Ridge contributes is putting more demands on Jeff firefighters. We want to partner with River Ridge to provide them with the fire protection they need as their industrial presence continues to grow. But we need them to contribute to this partnership. Well, to accommodate for the growth the city is seeing, Mayor Moore says infrastructure must keep up. This year, he says crews will work to widen Charlestown Pike all the way up to Salem Noble Road. The mayor expects that to be done within two years. Everybody that's asking for Charlestown Pike to be widened for the last several years, it's going to be a pain in the butt while it's happening, but we're getting it done. Other projects in the Jeffersonville area, the mayor highlighted today a new $30 million natatorium is being built at Jeff High. The mayor said more information about the new Jeff boat development is also coming soon.